Neighborhood residents are picking up food from the Red Cross. Most of the nearby supermarkets, bodegas, even laundromats are still closed. Some with yellow stickers on their doors signifying they sustained significant damage. Five feet of water covered this spot after Sandy. The Bloomberg administration hopes that one day, 25-story buildings will rise here instead. Uh -huh. Nate Bliss is a vice president surprise, for the city's surprise. economic development corporation in charge of the project. The underlying rationale behind the rezoning is as important as it ever was. The amusement area would be expanded. Surf Avenue would become a lively boulevard. The first floor of the building is devoted to retail. Bliss says the idea is to bring in a new demographic to the primarily low-income area. You know, this is a neighborhood that has struggled uh, and has not experienced the same renaissance that a lot of its neighbors in Brooklyn Tons of the and the other lots slated for development. That's because they lie below the 100-year flood elevation. The new buildings would also have to conform to modern codes and have electrical boards and other mechanical parts located above the flood level. Some of those techniques are also planned or underway in the other rezoned areas. They include Willits Point and Hunters Point South, both in Queens, and Manhattan's far west side, where the ground was broken this week. The Greenpoint Williamsburg waterfront was rezoned in 2005. One of the new buildings there is the 30 story tower at the edge, which fell into the zone that was under the city's mandatory evacuation order from Sandy. Its developer, Jeff Levine. Foot. They're putting high rise condominiums and hotels in there just like I predicted. Levine is modest. He says his team made smart design choices, such as adding landfill to bring the grade level up several feet higher, but admits he was very lucky the surge wasn't worse. Still, he says building right on the East River still makes sense. We have very little land left upon which to build new buildings. We have limited areas that have very good public transportation in the form of subways, buses, and I think we need to take advantage of that. Years ago, the debates over redeveloping these waterfront areas had everything to do with extreme building heights, but very little to do with the wisdom of putting tens of thousands of people into those Zone A areas, which would have to be evacuated in the event of a hurricane or tropical storm. Levine says measures have to be taken to protect residents, but that there's not enough reason to stop developing the waterfront entirely. I, and I've never had a second thought about populating zone arees uh, because I can choose the, the ones the behind it. Is a wonderful attraction for people as an amenity. Officials from the city planning department say since Sandy, they've been reviewing zoning and building codes to see if they need changes, but that new buildings constructed to current codes generally did than older structures, but planners and architects caution that may not always be the case. I think we're involved with a moving target. That's Lance J. Brown, a professor at City College's School of Architecture. Mayor Bloomberg's own panel on climate change, for instance, predicts that sea levels could rise another two to four feet over the next 70 years. That means the edge, instead of surviving a foot above Sandy's surge, could end up a few feet underwater next time. Jim Garrison, an architect and adjunct professor at the Pratt Institute, points out another potential challenge for building along the coast. Any action to control nature elicits an equal reaction. If you look at it as a comprehensive watershed management issue... Sandy was a total land grab. That you don't build. And it, it devastated it happens, mostly the waterfront areas. Most of the flooding in Coney Island came not from the ocean, but from a bay on the north side of the neighborhood. And this is what That's they want to redevelop. Ago, the Put in their fancy Board hotels and high rises and condominiums. Just so as I predicted. Sandy storm surge made its way around the peninsula and attacked where the banks were lower. The city's plan to add landfill as part of the restoring could have a similar effect. It will keep the new buildings dry, but could cause more flooding in other parts of the neighborhood. For WNYC, I'm Matthew Sherman. On the next frame, they want to resell it and put all their fancy the fucking hotels and condominiums in there. Talked about the Chinese officials and private citizens. I, I knew, I knew that's and what was going to happen. Better informed on regarding the world's most popular country.